Okay, so we're moving on to a reductive drawing here. Your first step is going to be to bring the entire page up to a middle gray using your charcoal pastel and your chamois. This might take a couple of coats. You don't want to go too dark or else you'll have difficulty erasing up to your lightest lights and you don't want to go too light because then you'll have a hard time seeing what you're doing now which is approaching the page with a gestural hand except instead of using vine charcoal or a pencil you're just going to use your pink pearl pretty much for as long as you can until you kind of determine you need to switch it up and use your vine charcoal so you can see that i'm using the edge of my pink pearl to cite my angles as well as to mark them on the page again i'm trying to work quick i'm trying to work loose i'm trying to set in the entire composition before i commit to any detail the awesome thing about working reductively is that if you feel unhappy with your composition as you started to determine it, you can just take your chamois and wipe it all back to a middle gray. Here I'm coming in with my vine. Um, again, as we know now, vine is pretty easy to erase. It's not going to leave a dark mark. So it's also a good kind of flexible editing tool here. I'm going to be going back and forth between my pink pearl and the vine quite a bit here. And our goal, especially with this reductive drawing more so than our additive, um, is to be thinking about the drapery as something that is just important as the objects in front of it. Uh, similar to our additive drawing, I want to pull the whole drawing up into a light, medium, and dark before I then decide to focus on any individual object. The lucky thing here is that we have our middle grays already defined for us because the whole page is a middle gray. So you only have to focus on your lights and your darks. And then bridging the gap between those two will be sort of our final step. So you can see that there's actually multiple marks that you can make with your pink pearl. Um, when I really want to pull something up into kind of a hard line, I use the front of it, the sort of pointier end. And then if I want a larger swath of a light area, I just use the side of it, like the sort of chisel tip. Here I'm starting to look for my lightest lights in my drapery. as well as my darkest darks. The directionality of the marks that you're making, both reductively and additively, can really help to can help with the legibility of the image. So you can think about our cross contour drawings. Um, there isn't only one correct direction, of course, but here I'm erasing along kind of the um, the angles of the planes that are moving back in space or the vertical angles here. So there's some sort of method to 
the madness here. It's not random. Working on a secret corner that nobody can see. Okay. So again, if you do need to use a contour line to help you understand or clarify an object, that's cool, but you see how I just blended it out into um, a value so that line disappears. Chamois is a great tool for moving like small amounts of charcoal around. And not all shadows are created equal. You see how the middle of that shadow is left a little bit darker. Um, I want you to look very close at these things. These subtle changes in light are what's going to bring these drawings to life. And if you have more than one light source, say here I have my overhead lights and a directional lamp, um, your shadows will not be simple because you have multiple light sources. Smooth, soft transitions between your values are going to contribute to a realistic look. Otherwise, it will be difficult to for the eye to really understand what's happening if your values are um, too wide apart, you know, too different and close to one another. You need some smooth transitions. Again, working with the sort of direction of the top of the object. Um, those diagonal lines are also going to help lead the eye back and out off that right side of the page. Shammy coming in really easily, getting rid of those sort of initial eraser marks that I don't need anymore. Here I'm really trying to build out the volume of this drapery, bring it to life a little bit. And again, having that wide range of values is really going to create a depth um, that 
you won't be able to sort of find if you're staying within like you know your three to eight on that value range you want your objects to have that kind of one to ten lightest to darkest um, within each sort of individual object it's just where those blend together how um, that are going to determine how realistic it's going to look I'm trying to break down my drapery on the right side now into light, dark, and medium. Remembering to look for subtle differences even within dark areas of shadow. I like to have a really good idea of the kind of value pattern of the drapery itself before I think about adding that shadow from the block on top of it. it kind of keeps me from um, doing everything twice.
I mean, think about the overall distribution of your areas of highest contrast as well. So when determining your composition, you're thinking about the distribution of that as well as, you know, these sort of diagonals um, of the objects themselves.